the first method that I have used to show how to make this basket weave yoke, I will say is for the very patient person, the extremely patient person. This second method is very easy and does not take so much time. The results seem similar, but the processes are a bit different. Welcome to today's tutorial on Gold Imperial Academy's channel. My name is Priska Osayani. If you're just joining us today, please hit the like button and also subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you always get notified each time we drop new videos. Today, we'll be learning how to make the basket weave yoke. I'll be using my front and back pattern that is the pattern that has the underarm dart I will also need a ruler you will need your pencil your cleaner your tracing wheel this is a tracing wheel you also need your bias tape you would need some newspapers you can get old newspapers to use i prefer to use newspaper because they are softer and easier to tear off once you are done and you would also need your tape roll now to begin this is my pattern right here i have laid it out that is the pattern that carries the underarm that you can use any pattern you are used to that's fine now first thing to do will be to determine where you want your yoke to start from so with the aid of my tape rule, I'll measure out from my neck point. This is my neck point. I will measure out where I want my yoke to get to. You can have your yoke at the across chest level. You can have it at your front underarm. But note that the more you descend, the more you'll be exposing your cleavage. So as a rule, I usually do not like to get to my underarm because when you get to your underarm, you are already get into like your cleavage that is when i'm using this particular type of pattern so usually what i do is to go like one inch above my underarm when i am doing a yoke design on this type of pattern okay so that is what i'll be doing i'll measure one inch upwards if you're comfortable with revealing your cleavage you can do as far as your front underarm so i have measured that in two places so that i would have a guideline to have a straight line now i'll be connecting that okay for the back as well you do the same you determine where you want your yoke to be okay for the back using my back underarm as a guideline i would do two inches or you can just measure what you have here all right you can measure what you have here and do the same for the back if you're comfortable with that so for this i have seven inches okay it's actually 6.8 but i'll be doing seven inches so you come to the back as well and do seven inches so this is my neck point at the back I can measure seven inches as well if you want it to be lower you can do that if you want it to be higher you're free to do that okay so i'll just measure that so that i can have a straight line this is straight this is not so i'll just measure what i have here i have one point a little bit above 1.25 but not really 1.3 so i'll mark that on my table i like to do that a lot okay so i'll come here and measure the same so i can have a straight line and then rule out my straight line now the next thing you will do would be to adjust your neckline depending on how wide you want your neckline to be so if you want your neckline to be the basic neckline you can leave it this way but if you want it to be a bit wider you can do that you want it to be wider by two inches you'll do that if you want it to be wider by 1.5 you'll do that if you want to increase the depth of your neckline you can do that as well for the back i'll be doing two inches for the back okay so then you connect that in a curve use your curve ruler to connect that okay now for this type of pattern i like to 
do a one inch transfer from the front and I have done that already so I'll just extend this upwards okay let's extend this upwards okay back to the front now I would like to put the cut sign on the line where I'll be cutting because I have a lot of lines going on there so that I'll know where exactly I'm cutting on. I'll also adjust the neck width. Remember your neck width for the front and the back should be the same. So I'll adjust my neck width by 1.5 because that was what I did for the back. And then descend by 2 inches should be fine. Okay, so I'll do two inches and then connect that using my curve ruler. So I like to do this. I'll just rule straight, rule a straight line. I'll rule a straight line. So I'll connect my curve to flush into that straight line. This will ensure that when I cut my neckline runs smoothly without having any ugly shape okay so the next thing i'll be doing will not be to trace this out onto my newspaper so for this i would need my tracing wheel okay so all i'll do is because i want a full pattern for the yoke i would make sure that i have my newspaper folded in two so i'll place my center front on the newspaper aligning it to the fold of the newspaper and then i'll begin to trace okay so i'm tracing this onto my newspaper All right, so I'm done now, okay? So I can faintly see the lines I have traced. So the next thing I'll be doing will be to pencil the lines out and then also add a seam allowance because I'll need a seam allowance of 0 0.5 to attach this back to my garment while sewing. So I'll go ahead and neatly pencil out the lines that I have traced onto my newspaper all right so i'm done tracing out my yoke so i would add my seam allowance of 0 0.5 to the traced out pattern before cutting it out all my seam allowances will be added remember that the way it is here is the same way I would have it there won't be a way to add seam allowance because I would be doing my weave on this okay so there I have my seam allowance so next will be to cut this out now and this is what I'll be using to make my basket weave. When you cut it out, this is it. This is what you have. So this is for my front. So I'm going to label it as front. Next, I will do the tracing out for the back. For the back, the same rule applies. Except if you are adding a zipper allowance, then you would have to make room for your zipper allowance but where you are not adding a zipper allowance then you would have to align your pattern to the folded edge of your newspaper so i'm just going to trace out i'm not having a zipper allowance to this okay so i'm just going to place this and then trace it out let me cut out the neckline first so to cut out the neckline i like to do this I'll place my neckline and then make sure that the necklines match okay so for the shorter one I would realign the shorter one okay so this is what I do so I'll go ahead now and 
cut out my back neckline all right cutting out my back neckline i'm going to be tracing this now you either cut it out or you just draw it out and then trace so i'm going to be tracing this now So here we have our pattern pieces, the back and also the front. So what we'll be doing now will be to start marking out how we want our basket weave to be. So you can make it slanting if you want, you just rule out the way you want it. Okay, you can make it slanting. So if you want to make it slanting, you just place your ruler diagonally and then slant like so in order for it to be even you have to make markings okay so like mine i would like to separate it by 0 0.5 you can make it wider so you can separate by 0 0.5 so all you just need to do is mark and rule okay once you mark out then you rule okay if you are doing diagonally okay so i'm just going to show you are doing it diagonally how to go about it you have to be careful because your newspaper is quite soft okay it's not that strong a paper so you just keep marking like so till you get to the end of the paper okay if you are unable to gauge with your eyes just use your tape rule and mark out the value you want to using spacing out your weave now let me stop here these markings that i'm doing is where i'll be placing my bias tape to sew okay so in order to be on the safe side i'll use my bias tape on this and see if i'm comfortable with the way it is before i finish marking here is my bias tape okay in case you don't know it this is the bias tape you can see it so if you want it to be wide you can just place it like this and top stitch okay but if you want it to be tinier you can fold like so and top stitch on it but i'd rather have it this way so you can place like this just to see how it will look like you can see that the space in between is quite small okay so i'm going to clean this off and then redraw my lines to accommodate my bias tape the way i want it to be if you want it to be on the vertical and on the horizontal you can do that as well so in that case you would mark out your horizontal lines and then your vertical lines so i mark this way so i think i'm going to go with one inch difference okay because my bias is more like 0 0.5 in width so by the time I sew 0 0.5 I'll have 0 0.5 left you can use any fabric of choice if you don't want a ready-made bias tape you can use your fabric so just use your fabric and cut out a bias strip by yourself so if I'm placing this on this line to sew, then the other one will come in like so. So you can see, you can see what you have. So if you're comfortable with this, you leave it. If you're not, you can move it up a bit. Okay. So just try it out first before you start ruling all your lines so that you won't finish up ruling and then you discover that, oh, you're not comfortable with what you have and then you start all over again okay so i don't want the difference to be this wide so i'm just gonna close this a little bit more okay so i can have this okay so if i were going to be having another line this comes here place it like so okay so i'm comfortable with the one inch so i'm going to be doing my one inch after ruling out your horizontal lines then you rule your vertical lines as well 
here I have drawn the first diagonal line so now I'm going to do the crossing that is the other diagonal lines remember the first one we drew it this way okay but now I'll come over to the upper part of my pattern and then continue to draw okay my diagonal lines hope you can see that so at the end of the day I'll be stitching on these lines now you can decide to use an interfacing that you can tear off easily for this instead of using a newspaper if you'll be able to manage that you can use an interfacing that can be easily torn away when you are done okay so I'll continue this way till I get to the other side of my pattern right here so here are my pattern pieces all rolled out you can see all the diagonal lines so now I'm going to be using my bias and I will be showing on the lines that I have drawn okay so I'm going to be showing you as I progress first of all I'll sew the one in one direction then thereafter I will continue with the one in the opposite direction so I'll be doing that for both the front and the back so I am sewing this already and you can see it's looking beautiful I would like to show you what I am doing now this is the process so when you are sewing you make sure that your bias goes in and out so for example this is on top of this and then it has to be tucked in and then comes out again so you can see it so it looks like when you are weaving a basket okay this is quite wide okay but if you want it to be smaller you probably do like 0 0.5 i did one because i wanted it i wanted to lay it like this but then i changed my mind and decided to fold it in two okay so you can either make it 0 0.5 if you want it to be thinner but like this is wide but it's absolutely fine i like it it's beautiful so whatever choice you make is fine but just know that as you sew, you kind of like make it look like you are weaving. So you won't just sew it straight, straight. So you pass it in, okay? It comes out, lays on top of this, goes under like that, okay? Under here, it comes on top of this, goes under, on top, goes under like that. So you can see it, okay? It goes under here, it comes on top here goes under okay just like that till you are done sewing so i'm going to continue sewing and then show you when i am done this is really looking beautiful and i love it i have done the two using two different methods so that i will see the difficulty level and also the effect of using any of the methods well i kind of like this one but you really have to be patient to do this this is the first one i showed earlier where you have to tuck it in bring it out tuck it in like you're weaving okay this is it for this second method all i did was to first of all stitch the bias following one set of diagonal lines okay then i came back and then stitch the other side of the diagonal lines as against this one that i have to stitch and talking stitch and talking this one is a bit difficult to make while this one is pretty easy so like if you are in a hurry and you just have to do it this is your best bet okay the effect is actually the same they both look alike and i think i kind of prefer this one this one is more beautiful i like it so you can make this and attach it to the yoke of your peplum top your fled dress your a-line dress or any dress for that matter or anybody's type for that matter so we'll look forward to seeing you replicate this and when you do please don't forget to tag us we are on instagram as j gold imperial our facebook page is j gold imperial we have a community on facebook gold imperial academy we look forward to seeing you replicate this and tagging us and we'll be very much happy to see your own designs from this tutorial please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe if you are yet to do so 
we'll also appreciate if you share this video with your colleagues your friends and your loved ones so we'll come your way again thank you so much for staying with us we appreciate you god bless you see you next time bye, -bye.